scheduler-related configuration inside of our writer. Before we begin, Level said a little, just a little bit on what we're talking about as far as the scheduler is concerned. Towards the top of the screen, there's an icon there that says scheduler. As I get out into the scheduler, we'll take a look at what we call our normal view, and then we'll look at one week. But this is how we'll keep track of when the appointments are on their way and or coming in. Down the left-hand side, we'll turn on all of my resources again so we can see the patchwork quilt. Up here are all of the appointments we have upcoming as we go through. So again, if we wanted to create a new appointment, we either use the new appointment icon or double click in the screen where we'd like that appointment to be and we can go ahead and create a brand new appointment. Now again, there are some options as far as the scheduler is concerned. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my scheduler window. We're gonna start over on the left-hand side underneath configuration. Inside of configuration, underneath the configuration header, down towards the bottom, there's an option there that says scheduler setup. You'll notice four different menu items that open up. The very first one is not actually a menu item, it's a toggle. And what I mean by that is you'll notice there's a checkbox to the left where it says enable scheduler. If I was to uncheck that, certainly it wants a password or security level to do so, but underneath configuration and then scheduler setup, you'll notice that my additional options are now, are now gone because before there was scheduler, and scheduler was introduced with version 1.19. So you have to go back well into the early 2000s or mid 2000s when scheduler was originally introduced but there was this animal called the calendar which the functionality still exists if you wanted to use the calendar it was much more rudimentary in terms of how we would keep track of who was coming in and why but again there was the calendar so the very first piece is if my icon at the top says calendar and not scheduler and i'll come in here and i'll click on the enable scheduler button and then essentially what I'm doing is I'm turning that on so that I now have the scheduler enabled and now I can look at some of my other menu items underneath my scheduler setup menu. The second one there says scheduler options. And as you get into the scheduler options window, in here we start out at the top where it says shop hours. And again, you define your start and your end time. And again, Sunday through Saturday, you'll notice that I've got Sunday flagged as closed. What this does is this puts the hours in a slightly different version of grayscale. What I mean by that is if I was to go back over to the scheduler, what you'll notice is, not sure how much or how well it shows up on our webinar, but you'll notice that Sunday is a little bit of a deeper color of gray than Saturday was. And oh, by the way, Saturday after five o'clock is also in that same shade of gray. So if I look back at my options, you'll notice again, I'm only open until five o'clock on Saturday and I'm closed on Sunday. So again, it's supposed to be a visual cue as we're going to schedule those appointments as to what hours and or days would be appropriate for us to schedule those appointments. On the left-hand side where it says scheduler hours, start time eight, end time 6 p.m. I went back into the scheduler itself. You'll notice I can scroll up and down if I needed to in order to see my entire day. But however, I open at eight o'clock, I close at six. I should not have appointments scheduled outside of that time frame. So where we look in this lower left-hand corner, this is defining what hours we actually see on the scheduler. Not uncommon, quite honestly, for if I'm open from 8 to 6, I'll have the scheduler from, let's say, 7, 7.30 or 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. because there may be activities. They may not be direct customer-related. There may be activities that we're going to come in for earlier. I might create an appointment to do a cycle count one morning at 7 a.m. Or there may be an opportunity for me to stay after hours a little bit. So again, typically hanging one hour out either before and or after, you certainly wouldn't want to see 24 hours. It makes scrolling back up and back up and down a much more common occurrence. Display last, in my case, I've got it set to 60 days. What this essentially says is, as we bring up the scheduler, in the upper left-hand corner, it's going to put each of the days that has appointments scheduled in bold. Again, you'll notice in my case, I've got my dummy data all centered right around today's time frame. If I went back a little bit, I had some appointments back in early April. And again, if I continued on back, back in late March as well. What that display last 60 days does is it says, I'm only gonna look back 60 days in history on this calendar. As we were looking, we've got customers that have been using the scheduler for 
six, eight, ten years now, and they've got a significant amount of data, historical data relative to the scheduler. And so as you launch the scheduler, all of that information has to get put in the appropriate place. And the more data that we're working with, obviously the longer it's going to take in order to sort that all through. So again, as we look in that configured setting in the lower left-hand corner, display lasts this many days as we go through. Under miscellaneous, highlight tech and unscheduled labor, highlight tech on scheduled labor, don't highlight labor, and or lock closed repair order. So what this essentially does, again, two different settings. These first three radio buttons are one setting. Lock closed RO is a second setting. What that essentially says is, if we looked at locked closed RO, and I'm gonna go back to yesterday, because I've got an appointment in yesterday, where you'll notice, you see the italics here? Italics versus bold versus, if I went back and looked at a second day, versus, it looks like they're all, there we go, there's some that are not in bold anymore, just regular case. The difference is, one, in, one that's in bold is an appointment that's on the scheduler, there is no corresponding estimate or repair order that has been created from that appointment. One that's in regular case is it's on the scheduler, however, there is already an estimate or work in progress ticket that was associated with this appointment. And then the one that's in italics indicates to me that we have finalized a repair order from, from, the, from an estimate or a repair order that was tied to this appointment. If I double click on that one again, I could still come in and I can make changes to it because I did not lock that closed repair order, meaning I did not lock the appointment once the repair order has been closed. So that's our configurable setting here where it says lock closed RO. These other three buttons, highlight tech on unscheduled, scheduled, or don't highlight. What that has to do with is using our writer to kind of manage the workflow. Got Mark Allen and his 05 Nissan Altima that's sitting here. And again, you'll notice the suspension system inspection has got a big red block out on the left-hand side. That's because we added that into our scheduler to keep track of who was doing that and where. We then sold them a set of tires with a tire mount and balance. It looks like we've got some front and rear, maybe left and right. But if I wanted to put that on the scheduler, all I would do is I would click on the scheduler icon. I would tell it we're going to do that tomorrow at how about 8 a.m. So if I go ahead and put in tomorrow at 0800A and then say OK, and now it puts an appointment out there on Wednesday, May 9th. There is Mark Allen. We won't send him that appointment confirmation email. But to our configurable setting, what we now see is all of these boxes are now in red because they are all on the scheduler as well. So all that that config setting does is it tells us whether it should highlight it on the scheduled labor, highlight unscheduled, or if you're not utilizing that functionality, don't bother highlighting in either case as we go through. Appointment reminder emails, send if due in next this many hours, send confirmation after news, send confirmation when updated. And again, I've got them both set to prompt. Essentially, these last two settings that say prompt are relative to if I came in here and I said, well, let's go ahead and let's change the time of that appointment. Should we send that a confirmation, the appointment confirmation email because it's been updated? As we created that appointment for the very first time, it was a new email. It prompted us because it was a new appointment that we were putting in there. So again, whether or not it prompts us as we change the appointment, or whether or not it prompts us when it's a new appointment, again, both driven by those settings in that lower right-hand corner. Back here where it says, send reminder if due in next. This is relative to in the upper section of our scheduler where it says, send reminders. The way the send reminder functionality works is it is not set on a timer, it is not set on a schedule, it is a manual effort to go send the reminders. So you come out here and you hit send reminders and it says I'm gonna look this far out into the future. So right now I have mine set to 48 hours. So it says well if from this point in time, right now we're sitting here at 1215 central time, it's gonna look 48 hours into the future. That would get us to midday on Thursday or just afternoon on Thursday. It's going to look for any appointment where the customer has what appears to be a valid email address and send them an appointment reminder email. It'll send them that reminder just once, meaning that means that we sent 
if we sent it right now for 48 hours into the future, it's, we're going to send it to customers whose appointments are all day tomorrow and then Thursday morning. When I go to send it tomorrow, again at noon, then it will not send to people Wednesday afternoon, not send to people Thursday morning, but Thursday after 1215, and then Friday up until. So it says, well, if I've already sent you one appointment reminder, I'm not going to send you another. So you can set it for 48, 72, 96 hours, however far out into the future you'd like to set it, and it will just send that customer one email. We didn't want to have somebody set it to, let's say, 72 hours, and have them get three separate emails reminding them of the appointment that probably wouldn't sit well with most customers. So again, send reminder if due in next. When I talk to people about this, I typically say, well, do it consistently, meaning always do it first thing in the morning, always do it at the end of the day. Um, and again, when you do that, if you do it first thing in the morning, probably 72 hours is the best place to set it. Because let's say we walk in Monday morning and we set it to 72 hours, to send from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Tuesday, it'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and so on and so forth. When you get to Saturday, on Saturday, it will send for Saturday, although in, realistically, we've already sent to Saturday, but it'll skip month Sunday if we're closed, and then now all of a sudden, Monday. So now we're, we're bridging that gap where we're gonna have a day where we wouldn't send those reminders. If you send it at the end of the day, then 48 typically is okay. So Saturday at 6 p.m., we'll send reminders for Sunday when I may or may not be open, then Monday up until 6 p.m. The only caveat there would be when you get that, let's say, Memorial Day, Labor Day, holiday, where maybe you're closed on a Monday as well, and now all of a sudden making sure that those folks on Tuesday. So again, we'll deal with those couple of instances individually as opposed to trying to worry about accommodating them with a configured setup. So again, if we're looking back at our configuration, we're really talking about is send if due in this many hours. And again, it'll only send once, so, even, so don't worry about overlapping a customer more than one time. And again, my recommendation would be do that consistently, either morning or during end of day, and then make sure that it's set either at 72 or 48 hours appropriately, or certainly at your discretion, whichever you would prefer. Two other configuration elements I want to talk about as far as scheduler is concerned. We'll continue down the, the scheduler setup menu. The second option, again, toggle window or menu, is to come in here where it says add and edit resources. In my resource drop down again, what we're seeing in my case is I have six different resources. When I go back and look at the scheduler, what I see is when I look at what's called my resource view, and or down the left-hand side, where I've got my resource view. Again, here are the different resources that are available. So if we're using this to keep track of workflow, where is somebody going to perform the work? This is how I control that list across the top. This is how, again, we control that list down the left-hand side. Not real difficult as far as resources are concerned. If we all of a sudden had a magical seventh bay appear, we'll just click on Add. We want a resource code. It doesn't have to be any more difficult than just some form of an abbreviation, but again, one, two, or three-digit alphanumeric code that we use in the background to keep track. The resource is going to just be base 7, and maybe that's a pad lift as well. And so then now we've associated our resource. The last piece would be if we want to color code things. So as we're assigning to that resource, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make that a nice shade of mauve there, and then when I click on Save, the next time I close and open the scheduler, we're going to notice, of course, I just happened to pick a color very similar to the one that was associated with Bay 6. But the next time we come back and open the scheduler, no more difficult than just adding that in. Now we've got that extra resource that's out there as well. So Bay 7, and again, I just happened to pick a color very similar to one that was already previously in use. As In addition to editing resources, we can also edit what's called the status. So again, if I wanted to assign statuses, the, the top three, open, closed, and drop-off, are hard-coded, meaning we'll, those will be there by default. It's everything after there that we can configure. And if I was to look at my appointment statuses that I can associate, back down to configuration, underneath my configuration, down to my scheduler setup, and my add and edit appointment status, what we'll see here is, again, I define the status, and then I can define not only the status, what it reads, but also if we wanted to have an icon that appears. 
So anytime you're looking at the scheduler and you're seeing these little icons, the little hand in my case says, we'll wait for vehicle. So again, in this case, needs transportation, but so you can assign and or associate a status with an individual appointment as well. One last piece as far as scheduler configuration is concerned, and that's over in the technician configuration. So underneath configuration, parts, I'm sorry, labor, and then over to technicians as we come down our menu here. I drop my window down, and then we'll pick on Bart Smith. You will notice down here where it says color, and then it says reverse text. So again, much like we did with the resource, we can assign a color to an individual technician. So therefore, I've associated red with Bart, light green with Bob. And then what you can also do is you can define whether it's white text on a darker background or black text on a lighter background. That's all that this reverse text does is it says, should the text be black or should the text be white? So all we're doing here is we're associating a color with our individual technicians. One last piece at the bottom where it says flag hours, back when calendar was in place. So again, before the scheduler existed, we would use these flag hours as a way to try to keep track of how many hours we had available on any given day. Those no longer have purpose or relevance if you're using the scheduler. So even though there are values down there, I will tell you, don't worry about them. And again, don't populate them as you're using the scheduler. They were only relative to the calendar in this window here.